<clears throat> so, so what I thought I'd do is, is I mean, I don't, I, don't need to, I don't need to explain how amazing Grab has been. Grab has probably been one of the most inspirational tech companies in Southeast Asia in the last three years. And one of the things that I've always loved as a fellow entrepreneur about what Anthony and the team at Grab have done is that they've really proven that ASEAN-based companies can really outsmart, outbeat, and outchallenge you know, big global companies that sometimes seem to have better talent, better technology, and better funding, but yet being local, uh, having initiative always goes a long, long way. So, you know, this is one of the things I want to talk to you about today, but what I thought I'd do first is that I want, I'm going to pull up a few photos. Oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to ask you about some of these photos. And oh, no. so Anthony hasn't seen these photos, this so is, this, is, this was put this together by the news. team yesterday. This is bad news. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, when, when Grab first launched, it was actually called My Taxi in Malaysia. And one of the things I remember is that you had really catchy taglines. Yeah, you did. And I don't know if you guys remember, does anyone remember Grab's first tagline in Malaysia was actually, I like it safe and I like it fast. <laughs> hence, hence, hence baby number two coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't do so well with the I like it safe. <laughs> what, tell, tell, like, what, what were you thinking? Yeah, I wasn't married. Uh. <laughs> Anthony's wife is actually, uh, Chloe is actually here. So, <laughs> so what was I thinking yeah. about these taglines? Yeah. Well, I think, well, again, you know, why did we start Grab, mm. right? Uh, a big part was a lot of us, um, many of our fellow Mal Malaysians here know that the taxi system was essentially broken. Mm. Um, Safety was a massive issue. I mean, yep. I shared a story before my co-founder, um, you know, she would finish at McKinsey at two in the morning, uh, mm. jump in the back of a taxi, pretend that she's on the phone um, and with mm. her mom and being very loud in front of the driver so mm. that the driver thinks that she's on the phone, but she's just mm. lying the whole time um, about her being on the phone. And that was a massive pain point, yeah. right? A lot of... Um, the people we love, right? Uh, women, children, um, our fellow siblings, all mm. had these troubles. So we said, okay, how do we promise that? And of course, remind ourselves yep. with something that yep. uh, was catchy enough um, that didn't come out from Durex. Yep. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, and people would remember mm. and, and, re and remind each other yep. as we... So every time... You know, we, we said, look, I like it safe uh, yep. within, within grabbers. And, and, and the, the next reply would be, you're right. Every yep. ride matters. Mm. I need to make sure that every ride, I think that it's mm. my wife in the car. It's my husband in the car. Yep. It's my daughter in the car. Because of that, I'm going to make sure I serve well. So Beautiful. that was the tagline. Beautiful. And that was also the constant reminder to each of us. Beautiful. Now... When you first launched in Malaysia, is my taxi. I'm trying to understand. I think this is a relevant question for every every internet company in the room because many people have to juggle this thought with: Do I focus on one country? Do I focus on many countries? Do I take it sequentially? When when you first started my taxi, were you just focused on being a Malaysian-only business? And at what point did you say, "Hey, you know what? There's something bigger here. I really think I can build a, a regional, global business here." Well, I, I have it. Um, I thank HBS um, yeah. for that. <coughs> When we pitched at uh, Harvard Business School's mm. annual business plan competition, I remember them saying, uh, Anthony, you know, great, great deck, really interesting business mm. plan, completely makes sense, but you're number two. You're not going to be number one today. And you know, my co-founder, Ling, and I, and two other people who were helping mm. us, we were just like, oh, man, um, you know, really down. And, and they said, well, there was a panel of, of great mm. VCs, and they said, look, the reason is Malaysia's just too small. Mm. It's just too small, and you need to get out there. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful that that panel made us number two and not number one. And that was a key reminder why right after KL, the next city was Manila, and that's okay. Manila. Beautiful. <clears throat> tell me about your co-founder, and I'll tell you why this is fascinating, because most of the studies 
in Silicon Valley have showed that great transformative businesses have a greater chance of being built when, when there are co-founders as opposed to a sole founder. So I'm very curious to understand the relationship between you and your co-founder and how have you guys worked together to build such a great business? Well, first of all, um, I, she's not my sister, even though she has Tan Hui Ling. Um, she's <laughs> not my sister, but I love her like my sister. Mm. Um, she is an incredible person, yep. um, very, very smart, uh, very inquisitive, and she just has a big heart. Mm. So I think when you can meet someone, um, you know, I, I would say, you know, besides my mother, my amazing wife, um, you know, the, the next mm. strong woman in my life is my co-founder. Mm. Um, and when you can share such core values, um, she and, I mean, we differ in a lot of things. Um, she looks, she's extremely meticulous. I'm super big picture. Mm. Uh, she gets shit done, I don't. Um, <laughs> and, and, and she, but on the values component, yep. we are like 100% aligned. Yep. And I think finding that uh, probably made things, you know, every time when we didn't agree on something, we said, okay, let's go back to the principles. Let's go back to the values. Yep. And then that just made things you know, converge so yeah. much faster. One of the things that I found as being a Asian entrepreneur, right, is that we are always up against what are perceived to be bigger, better, richer competitors, right? There's always a big American company with a lot yeah. of money. And, and what I found in, in my own journey is that when you have a co-founder, like you're, you're in that battle together, right? You never want to fight a battle alone. And, and I'd be keen to hear like, and you guys have just done a phenomenal job in in you know, completely dominating the region, you guys are clearly ahead. It, w were there moments where the two of you were like, holy fuck, how do we do this? <laughs> uh, many, uh, nearly every day. <laughs> uh, we, there, there are times when we're just like, like literally, we're just like, we are way over our heads. Mm. Um, and I just, you know, I literally, you know, go on my knees and, 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 and pray and say, you know, God, I, I have no clue what I'm doing. Mm. Um, help me out here. And I, I spent a lot of time, you know, thinking about with, with my co-founder, with my wife, with my team, mm. just really thinking about, okay, what are the stuff that we're really good at? Yep. Um, so example, you know, being Malaysians, we knew things that people didn't care about. Mm. Um, for example, in Southeast Asia, uh, cash, is the you know all the mm. presentations before um, cash is still the main medium of exchange mm. how do we master cash right and people used to say and you're crazy you're gonna have you know an army of foot soldiers on the ground mm. processing cash but we're like look that's what people want that's what we give them and maybe for someone in san francisco or someone in europe you're like look cash ain't that important but for us it's our core mm. right so that was really important um, you know, other things, for example, you know, we see in Southeast Asia, if you remember in the old days uh, in Malaysia, you know, shout out to Bonus Link, right? I don't mm. remember Bonus Link card. Mm. And everybody like, oh, I'll go to the petrol station because of Bonus Link. Mm. Um, then we're like, oh, that makes sense. And that sense of loyalty, everybody will go back mm. to that gas station just because the that, 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 that point. Mm. And like, who actually redeems those <laughs> points, right? Yeah. Um, I could probably redeem a house by now, um, <laughs> but I never redeemed it. Um, but I did go uh, back to the gas station all the time. So I, he said, okay, let's create Grab Rewards. Yep. Um, and we're the only guys who have a rewards program in Southeast Asia. Mm. Um, one that people will say, hey, I'm using Grab because I know that I'm going to get points, because mm. I'm going to be silver, I'm going to be gold, mm. I'm going to be platinum. Um, these were, again, you know, local stuff. Um, sure. Probably another thing that was very local was you know, what do Southeast Asians love doing besides, you know, to your presentation, mm. Instagram and, mm. and Facebook, they love chatting, right? Yep. You look at, they just chat all the time. Um, they don't like talking, they like chatting. Um, <laughs> and, and we said, okay, why don't yep. we build Grab Chat? Um, you know, a lot of people in Southeast Asia love chatting mm. and they want, they're much more comfortable chatting with their driver than mm. calling the driver. Mm. So we built Grab Chat. Again, first, no, yep. Nobody else had it. Our Grab Chat has has translate. So if you type in Vietnam, if you type in Vietnamese, it translates to English. 
or English to Vietnamese or English to Thai, so the driver and the passenger Good can point. understand each other. So again, these are really local stuff that Southeast Asians really care about, but others just don't. True, true. Um, tell me about this. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys know that, that uh, Anthony's son is now the youngest Grab driver in the world. Yes, exactly. There's actually a photo of him online where he has a mini <laughs> Grab taxi. And he's actually here. So if any of you see a cute little two-year-old walking around, yes. Anthony's son is actually at Walt Digital. Yes, it's not Patrick's uh, son, that, that, not ha son. Has, that hasn't been discovered yet. Because uh, uh, we... Because uh, let's <laughs> cut this interview. Uh, uh, yeah, so this was his one-year-old. Yeah. Um, and... And he, he was, uh, it was, it was a beautiful day where I got to spend with my family, mm. um, very rare. Um, and my wife, as usual, being the super supportive self she is, um, she goes, you know, why don't we, instead of just making it, uh, you know, a party for the kids, uh, you can invite all, all your partners as well. So yep. it became literally, um, so all our bankers, all our, all our, it became like an investor meeting. Like a, um, like a, like, uh, like a, like a, a fundraising event. Yeah, maybe a fundraising um, event, why not? Um, so our partners came, and I think it was a key reminder of why, you know, I always say, right, uh, the biggest decision in your life is uh, finding that biggest joint venture partner of yours. The biggest merger, the biggest integration uh, is, is your wife. Um, for all the men out there um, and for all the women out there. Um, literally, I mean, we talked about this uh, some time ago, you know, when we had uh, our previous past. Mm. Um, let, let's keep it there and, and let the past be locked up. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know, we would have these big arguments, right? And mm. then next day you come to work, you're like completely knackered. Like, how mm. do you focus on a customer? You're like, God, I just want to get her off my back. Mm. Um, and I think the beauty is when now, when you have someone who uh, really shares your values again, mm. who just wants you to go out there and um, absolutely kill it and make an impact mm. and, and do the right things and make the world a better place. Yeah. Um, because I remember when she met me, you know, I had, you know, it was still the early days, so we had no money and I had no time. Um, remember, ladies, please don't find a startup entrepreneur who has no money or no time. <laughs> it's a bad deal. That's um, most of them. That's most of them. Exactly, most of us here. And, mm. and she, you know, mm. the, I think the beauty was she believed that um, it didn't matter. All that mattered was, hey, we shared the same values, we shared the same faith, mm. we we wanted to make a change in the world, mm. and that was it. And, and I think that probably brought us and made Grab and made me the man I am today. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so I don't know what you're doing in this photo, <laughs> but so this is for, uh, I'm for the telling I'm telling her she just raised a few billion. This is this is this is Jean, who, who's um, Jean, yeah. one of the co-founders of Diddy, which is f worth about 50 billion US. They have raised over 10 billion US. It, it is probably one of the biggest private tech companies in the world today, and they have also once again reinforced that great local entrepreneurs can always beat and outsmart. Um, Western companies, even if they have more money and a head start and so on. And, 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 you, and you guys have a special relationship because Didi is, from what I understand, is actually a shareholder in Grab now. Yep. T tell me about this, like, this companionship. Like, what if, I guess it's almost like two local companies fighting this battle against these big American giants. And, and, and you guys have been fighting this battle together and you've both now come out of it and won this battle. Like, tell me kind of a little bit about the relationship and what, what, you, what have you learned from this partnership? few things. Um, I mean, Jean is a very mm. dear friend, um, and, you know, in, we, we, it's developed into a relationship mm. where even, you know, they've had dark times too. Mm. I remember uh, there were times when, I mean, you know, Cheng Wei, uh, the co-founder uh, of, of Didi, would share, you know, there were times when literally they were, they were afraid they couldn't pay salary the next day. 
mm. and they had to go over to uh, you know, some of the, the, the big entrepreneurs' homes and literally ask for money at that day, um, the day before paying salaries. So these guys are hardcore, mm. right? really hardcore, um, very sharp, and, but at the same time, they dare to be vulnerable. And you know, we would talk about, you know, I'd say, hey, Gene, you know, I'm really thinking about everything. I'm praying for you mm. during these times. And she'd be like, thank you. Um, Cheng Wei would call up, and, and there's this bond of, look, Xiong uh, Ti, you know, this sense of brotherhood mm. that, look, we're in this battle together. Let's show them the power of Asia, right? Yeah. And, then, and then, you know, it was so inspirational because we would just, like, egg each other on. And I think the ability to see them do, today they're doing about, about 20, eight, 18 to 20 million transactions, uh, rides a day. Okay. You know, today we do you know, something close to 3 million rides a day. Uh, still not, not close to them, but the fact that they've been able to say, look, you know, just to give you some numbers, mm. you know, Ali does about 30 over million. So 20 and 30 is not that far. But to be able to scale that kind mm. of velocity and that kind of scalability Incredible. And, then, mm. and then share that over uh, with us so that when we scale and, you know, the next time I'll be here, probably like 10 million rides. Mm. And when you have, you know, when we are moving literally countries, economies, and if anything happened to grab, touch wood, mm. um, people don't go to work, right? Yeah. Millions of people don't go to work. So how do you make sure that your system can handle that kind of velocity, right? Every second, 30, 60, 100 bookings are going through. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure you process that? And that ability to share, that ability to learn from each other, mm -hmm. um, because they don't know Southeast Asia, they don't pretend to know Southeast Asia, they want to learn and they help us. Yeah. So I think finding two <coughs> sort of brethren in this and fighting it together is really fun. Mm -hmm. um, Last a few last questions. Tell us about fundraising. I mean, you guys, how much have you guys raised now? Over, over what, 1.2, 1.3 billion US dollars? Something like that, yes. Huge, huge amount. I mean, you know, and for everyone in the room, I'm sure everyone in the room is involved at fundraising at some point. How many pitch meetings do you think you've done since you started Grab? Wow. Um, hmm. A lot. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would say, I would say, I. I don't remember to yeah. be exact. Um, I would say probably 70 to 80 percent have converted in our shareholders today. Okay, um, that's impressive. So, so a lot of times, I think my my humble sharing with mm. uh, this room is there'll be a lot of times when you know maybe at Series A they're not ready, mm. uh, but they came in in C. You know, mm. um, maybe they weren't ready in C. They came in later. So you know, develop, it's not a, you know, I always share it with our guys, it's not about starting well, it's about finishing damn well, yep. right? It's not mm. about the start. Everybody wants to like go out. Mm. Um, I think, you know, my good friend, I don't know, he's here, Kylie, he said, you know, mm. when you ask the startup guy, he's like, oh yeah, we're growing gangbusters. Mm. Um, yeah, but so what if you're not making money? So what if you can't sustain? So mm. what if you're gonna run out of funding by tomorrow? Right. So you need to think about, hey, how am I going to make sure that I develop, I develop real relationships? So the guys we've developed with, um, for example, Masayoshi, mm. I remember um, meeting him for the first time. And, and you know, at that time, we were fighting it out and he, uh, with our local competitors. And he said, you know, Anthony, so first of all, imagine this. Um, you know, there's a Tokugawa emperor costume behind. You know, you're in, in Tokyo, uh, whatever, 40 mm. top floor of his building. You know, all of Tokyo is below you, and you know, it's all glass. And you, you look at him, and he's this, you know, very distinguished gentleman. And there's a samurai, you know, costume. There's a golf club there. There's mm. a baseball bat on the left. Um, Nikesh, who was uh, nearby, mm. was like, yep, this is how we, you know, he takes the bat, you know, hits his feet, and then he goes, this is how we prepare for investor meetings. Um, <laughs> a big baseball bat. Um, and, then, and then he goes, you know, and then he, he says, Anthony, I love the business, you know, 
the seat you're sitting in, and you know, I'm, we're, we're negotiating there, mm. and you know, it's not probably wise to negotiate with Masayoshi. Um, and he says, look, Anthony, 14 years ago, mm. Jack Ma sat in that seat. And he said, 14 years ago, Jack Ma sat in his head. And you know, at this time, you're like, <laughs> Okay, I'm 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 naked now. Um, <laughs> I, I <laughs> and and then he goes, look, Anthony San, you take my money. Good for me, good for you. You don't take my money, not so good for you. <laughs> 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 so at that time, like, you know, just bow and just <laughs> just just accept whatever that's on the table. Um, but but I think the beauty of of learning from him was that ability to um, tremendously humble, uh, very honorable. I mean, he would, he would say, Anthony, you know, I don't need to look at agreement. Let's just shake hands yeah. and that's done. Um, that honor was something that we've made sure, um, you know, and he always said, you know, Anthony, before I even talk to you, I spent time doing research on you, how you've done business mm. and and the ability to say, look, I know that you will honor your word. And I don't need to even check the agreement. Well, he has a baseball bat and a samurai exactly. sword. Exactly. It, right, it, right it, okay, it didn't yeah. help. It didn't help. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and obviously, at this time, mm. I'm shaking. Um, and I think that ability to say you're credible, you want to honor this relationship mm. throughout. And that has really paid off because He's come in in D, he's come in in all the mm, rounds, beautiful. every time, right? Showing you that, look, it is honor. It mm. is about making sure that this whole legal agreement thing, yes, you can think about full stops, you can think about every sentence, you can think about, you can think about covering your ass all mm. the time. Yep. But <coughs> frankly, in the end, it's that handshake and it's that him looking in your eyes and saying, okay, I'll hold you to it. And I say yes, and then we go out and fight together. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, big round of applause for Anthony. That's incredible. <laughs> I've, uh, because Anthony was such a sport, and from it, we got a little gift oh, for Anthony. So, in case one day Anthony becomes a uh, Grab driver himself, we've got his own personalized yeah. Grab number plate. Awesome. <laughs> and, and guys, you know, for for all those uh, who speak Bahasa, just be careful. You know what boss means, right? Um, what orang susah sahaja. So please, uh, just remember when I put this on my car, get out of my way. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and now, we're, now that I've got you, I'm going to do one last dare with you. All right. We're going to play a little game. Oh, shit. We're going to put it up on the screen. We're going to see how good your driving skills are. Oh, no. You and I are going to play a little quick game on the Nintendo Wii, and we're going to drive, and what we're going to do is that if I beat you, okay. you have to give someone in this room a thousand ringgit in grab credit. You guys up for that? So, the, the first person who comes up. The first person. Oh, okay, the first person. If you All beat right. me, I'll be a grab driver for an afternoon. Done. Done? Yeah? How's that? Okay, okay. <clears throat> All right, let's play this. Okay. How do we play this? Wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been? A, have you ever driven? Have you ever been a grab driver? Dude, all the For, time. Really? I've driven even with my wife, um, and you know, in fact, I didn't have a car, so I had to borrow her car. Uh, and you charged her money to pick uh, her up and, and drive her around? Well, we had to call. I mean, she was glad because when we were picking up um, that that customer, she was quite attractive, and she was like, "Thank God, I'm in a car." Uh, <laughs> All right. Hi, welcome to Dirt 3. I'm Ellie, your business agent, and we're really excited that you've decided to sign with us. Now, before we move That's on... A bit of an overstatement. <laughs> best driver. All right, so if Anthony wins, I'll be a grab driver for an afternoon. And if I win... Yeah, grab share. Grab, grab share. Grab share, I'll grab be a grab share, share driver. driver. All right, you've got to pick up more customers. And if I win, we'll donate 1,000 ringgit to anyone's grab account in this audience. Yep. All right, you guys ready? Who, who came... Well, okay. Who, 
Well, someone who came here with a grab, I see. Okay, if someone came, if someone came here with this another, morning, an, another grab, right hailing, and they can no prove money. it, they get a thousand in their account. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. That, that was beautiful. <laughs> Again? Right, one, one, oh, okay. one more go. I thought I won. Okay. 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 Anthony, I you am move. pressing. You gave me wrong instructions. <laughs> okay, if, if I don't okay. win this, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Can I shoot Anthony? <laughs> He's getting intense. <laughs> Have you picked up any passengers? Is that you? <laughs> oh man, I can't wait to film you. Oh! oh. 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 All right, all right. Oh. Wait, who won? I still don't know who's. Winning? I think you're gonna be. I'm gonna give you a nice little costume for it. I'll put you in our new grab you now. Right. <laughs> as long as. Are we, are we near the end? Shall I hit Anthony? Where is it? It's gonna only see you, dude. Okay, okay, I'm gonna try to hit you. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. I, I think I won, dude. Wait, so who won? <laughs> you got this. <laughs> who won? Wait, who won? Right. We don't even know All who right. won. I think I won. <laughs> what do you guys think? Who won? Do you guys know who won? Yeah, there you go. We got a new grab driver in the right, house. I'll be, a, I'll be a grab driver. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you so much, man.